Hello, um, today I'll be showing you how you can manage your Cloud Lab experiment through the OpenStack dashboard. I'll show you how you can create multiple things, including networks, routers, and virtual machines. I'll show you how you can upload your own virtual machine images, and then I'll show you how you can manage your virtual machine instance either through the console on the OpenStack dashboard or through your own SSH client. So I have the experiment I created in my first video here, and if I expand the Profile Instructions tab, you'll see a link to the OpenStack dashboard and the randomly generated password for your experiment. So I would go ahead, copy this uh, password to your clipboard, and then we're going to open the OpenStack dashboard new tab. You might see this um, message here sometimes, just ignore it, it won't change anything. Um, the domain name is always going to be default, the username is always going to be admin, no matter what experiment you're using, and then the password is going to be that randomly generated password. This password is different for every experiment. So the first page it's going to load is your instances tab. Right now there's nothing here. But if you go to the network topology, OpenStack has created some default routers and networks. So these are the two networks. Here's the router. And then this is the external network. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to create a new network. And you can either do it from the network topology tab or the networks tab. So I'm going to go here. Okay and click on create network. The first thing we have to do is give it a name. So I'm just going to do test network. Um, make sure you click this shared button right here. And then go to the subnet tab. Give your subnet a name. We'll do test subnet. And um, you can do pretty much any IP address. You don't have to know a whole lot about IP addresses. Just choose something. Uh, make sure it's different from any other network you have or else you're going to run into some issues. So we're just going to do 12.0.0.0 slash .0 .0 .0 16. This has to be a CIDR value, um, IPv4. And then you have to do a gateway IP for the routers that you're going to connect to this network. So 12.0.0.1 is a good decision. And you don't have to mess with anything on here. And just click Create. So our new network is right here. And if we go to the network topology, we shall see it there as well. Um, it's not connected to anything right now, but what we're going to do is we're going to create a router to connect to this network. So let's go to the routers tab and create a new router. Um, the only thing you have to do here is give this a name and then connect it to the external network. And then once we create that, we'll go back to the network topology tab. So there's our new router. And as you can see, now it's connected to the external network. Now to connect it to this network, we want to click on our new router. We want to click on Add Interface. And then we want to choose the subnet of our new network. You can give this an IP address, but it, otherwise it'll just automatically assign one. So you don't have to worry too much about that. And as you can see, it connected that new network to our new router. So now we can create um, virtual machines connected to this virtual network. So uh, we'll click on the Compute tab here. We want to go to Instances again. And we want to click on Launch Instance. So give your instance a name. And you can also change the amount of virtual machines you want to create at once with these same settings. So we'll do three right now. And OpenStack provides two default images. This is um, Ubuntu 12, I believe. And then this one is Ubuntu 14.04. So click on the plus sign for whichever one you want to use. And this will allocate it to our new virtual machines. And then you'll see some flavors. These are the sizes that's going to be applied to your virtual machine. Um, I would not use the tiny one. You might run into some errors. So usually the m1.small is a good choice to go with. Um, you might need to choose a bigger size depending on what you're doing. And then we'll go to the networks and we'll click on the plus sign next to our test network. Um, there's a few more things you can mess around with here, but right now we don't need to mess with those. So we'll just click on launch instance. And in a few seconds, they will be built, they will be building and then spawn right here. And if we go to our network topology tab again, we'll see they've been um, created on our new network that we created. So there they are. They're still building right now. But while they're still building, we can also associate floating IPs with them. 
So what these floating IPs are, they're network um, IP addresses that allow you to access this virtual machine through an external SSH client. So I'll show you what I did. Click on oops, associate floating IP. Um, right now there's no floating IP addresses allocated, so we need to allocate one. You click on the plus sign. Um, you don't need to change anything here, just click on allocate IP address. You will receive an error if you've already um, allocated the maximum amount of IP addresses you can do for this experiment. So make sure um, we're associating this VM3, make sure VM3 is listed as the port to be associated, and click on associate. So now we have our new floating IP associated with this instance. We can use this to connect to our virtual machine using an external SSH client. But before I show you that, I want to show you the console that OpenStack provides for you by default. Mm -hmm. This console is a little slow, but the upside to it is even if you don't have a floating IP associated with one of your instances, you can still use this console. So if you click on the little arrow here and click on console, I'm going to do this for the instance that I don't have a floating IP associated with. Um, if you're on this page, sometimes it might not take keyboard commands. So if you click on to click here to show only console, this will open this in a new window. And the login is always going to be Ubuntu, but the password is going to be this randomly generated password here. Um, it won't let you copy and paste, so I'm just going to have to type this by hand. So we have 2F9D69332. Eight, nine, nine. Okay, so now we've logged in. Uh, we can do, you know, I have config. You can run any sort of commands here, but like I said, it does take a little bit of time sometimes, and it can be slow. So I would advise you to use an external SSH client instead. So this is the SSH client that I use. This is Moba X Term. I would recommend this one. It's free. It has a wide variety of features. You can transfer files from. Um, your computer to this virtual machine through this client. So we're going to copy this floating IP and we're going to click on session SSH and type that in there and we're going to log in as Ubuntu and same deal I've already entered in that randomly generated password and MobX term lets you save those passwords just for ease of use later on and now we can do whatever we want here on uh, our virtual machine instance. We can also, like I said, transfer files here, just drag and drop. So it's very easy to use. So let's say you have a custom image that you'd like to use of your experiments. If you go to compute and then images, there's an option to create an image. So we'll click on this. The image that I'm going to push is one of the default images that I installed Metasploit on. And then I want to push this back to the cloud so that I don't have to reinstall Metasploit several times on the default images. So there's a source, you can do either a URL that's a direct link to the download of the file, or you can upload an image from your computer. So I have this on my desktop right here. This is a raw file. Um, some files will automatically detect what type of file it is, but otherwise you might have to specify like I'm doing now. You can specify the minimum disk size or the minimum RAM size, but otherwise you can just leave that as default. And then it's going to upload that new image. It might take a while, depending on how you're um, uploading this image to Cloud Lab. If you're doing it from a URL, it's going to take longer than it would pushing it from your computer. But after this finishes uploading, you'll see it like you would any other image. And then you can either create a new instance from the Instances tab with that image, or you can launch it from this tab here.